Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. For those who are just listening, we find ourselves in the shadow of the mountain. For some, this is just a phrase. For some, it's literal. We are that close to that which you call Mount Shasta. No one has ever asked what its real name was, but it was not its original name. But we're going to just keep that for a while. Ariella Louise Jones is here, and she always is. And we would like to greet her, her soul, her essence, her beauty, and the messages that she gave all of you about the city and the mountain. I want to talk about the mountain, the city, the physical, the esoteric, and say, isn't it interesting that you have the greeting of one who has passed, who I say is still here? Would it interest you to know that there are some of you who do not reincarnate physically? That there are some who would reincarnate esoterically? to stay in a place and hold an energy and that would be her and so as long as any of you will come to this place I want you to greet her for her stamp is everywhere of the work that she did of the things that she spoke of even in an older energy where things were metaphorically revealed a tough time for some channeling. She did it. You might say she is the forerunner of all that is here known today and that which you are working on, even as you sit here, to understand more of what is on the mountain and in the mountain and what it means. The land here is different. This is one of these areas, dear ones, remarkable for its protection. We gave you a story not long ago of the small island of Kauai and how through the ages it was protected, protected even from inappropriate things that might have happened there from your military because it was a very sacred place that which used to be Lemuria and especially that particular island which carries something we don't often talk about it has in common something here it's tough for those who might just be listening to grasp an idea the idea is this that there is life that exists and the life would exist apart from any definition you would have any definition it's a tough call because there are so many who would define life as that which is human and animal and real to your touch and in the paradigm that you live you've defined life right down to the plants right down to the insects and this is what you see right down to the to the the pieces and the parts even of a virus you say this is alive this is not alive and you have all of these definitions what if I told you this is your paradigms definition could it be possible do you think that an evolved life especially one that perhaps had two or three million years on you would have a different kind of paradigm what if, what if, there's something that we haven't really talked about much, the evolution of the soul. But let's get back to the Shasta issue. Many years ago, when my partner brought me here, I gave a channeling, some of you can find, and it spoke of the protection of Shasta much like the protection of Kauai and for the same reasons 
In some of the valleys in Kauai, there's something called a Menahuni. Dear ones, let me rename them. They're Pleiadian. And those who are the natives there and speak of their magic that they have will say, well, they're invisible beings and they have magic. And those who have been around for a long time in the esoterics of that island say, pitch black at night. You can see lights in some of those valleys. They are so sacred that the government has said, hands off, don't go there. Under the guise that they are indigenous owned and that they are sacred. And even if the government does not know why they do that, they do that intuitively because they are sacred. Because I'll tell you, in those valleys, it's the same thing. It is on this mountain. On this mountain, in this mountain, there's the essence of the remembrance of up to 200,000 years ago of the teaching, even of the wheel. For the teachers were here. This is a node. And so was it in Hawaii. And there are others around that we have spoken of that would have some of these same attributes. My partner spoke and has spoken of the red center of Australia. It has the same exact attribute. My partner was in a helicopter and he was told by the pilot there were places they could not fly over because they were too sacred and then he was told that that would change if we had a woman pilot <laughs> and that she could fly over those and that the gender was important because of the teaching of the shamanship of the woman and that she was allowed because there was a sacredness that she would understand and the intuition that she would grasp that perhaps others would not. I tell you that this remains even today in some of the indigenous around this planet, but here it does too. The mountain is feminine no matter what they say. Is anyone there? Is there any proof anyone is there? It's tough when you have one paradigm which is so low consciousness to prove another which is high. We've given you an axiom before that says you cannot look up in consciousness, but you can always look down. You can always see where you've been, but it's tough to see where you're going, especially when it's an evolutionary consciousness that we speak of. And so I'm careful not to get too strange too quickly. But I'll get there. What if there was a plan of your soul? What if your soul actually is the entire reason for everything? What you know in this paradigm as human beings who are just starting to evolve into knowledge, to recognize light, to start to see the things which are metaphysical, you start to see things outside of what you expect. Last week we told you of some of the masters on this planet that, that are still here, not just the past ones who could who could create things from nothing. You saw this so vividly in some of the biblical masters who were talked about. And yet it exists today. That there are those who can create things out of nothing. And it's done with a master consciousness that has, has, has total control over the physics around them. And the interesting thing about this is that if you brought those here and you put them, for instance, on your media and you had the videos of them doing what they do right in front of the camera, 
there would be the vast majority who would say that isn't really happening you see it can't happen therefore it isn't happening it's faked and they would go upon their lives like they always had in total disbelief because the paradigm they have is set you cannot look up to a higher consciousness you cannot even stretch the imagination to consider it some the ones who sit in front of me are students of metaphysics beyond the physics that you know what if this was all about your soul let us say there are a certain number of souls in this galaxy and let us say that all that is done is about their evolution now let's take a look at your paradigm and what you believe as metaphysical people about the soul each one of you has a piece of the creative source in you and you carry it around and you you label it you say that it's carried in certain parts and pieces it's expressed in certain ways there is the Merkaba there's the pineal there's all of these different parses and pieces for you and then you as you, you, you see what is here and you, you truly understand that it's huge energetically huge so big is that soul of yours it can be multi places at once and we've talked about that just recently we have talked about the higher self which really isn't seem to be anywhere because there is no where in meta metaphysical terms of multidimensionality there's there cannot be a place that is finite like it is for you in a linear world that means that pieces and parts of your soul are everywhere now this is a tough thing to teach but that is part of the magnificence of you part of your soul and then you learn your soul may have a name you've never even heard a name we sing in light when you're not here that the name you have on your name tag today as you sit is the name for now and it's going to change the next time you you arrive the next time you arrive oh yes you see the soul manifests incarnations and expressions of itself that you call reincarnation you live for a certain amount of time and the essence of your soul and the consciousness of your soul goes back to that which is the creative source in some way and then returns in another body now you know this because this was the first intuitive thought of the first organized spiritual system on the planet the Hindu it still is there it is also the derivative of the Hindu into Buddhism it's still there reincarnation is a great deal older the idea of it the expression of it the understanding of it far older than you think and it's not a new age concept it's the way of it and then we start talking about the elevation of consciousness and what might take place in that paradigm of reincarnation you start to live longer you start to change we have told you that the blueprint of the human body is designed to reproduce itself and rejuvenate up to 900 years and you live a fraction of that and the reason why is because consciousness must be high for the body to work correctly now you kind of know where you are on the consciousness scale <laughs> but that is changing longer life is going to be a staple we gave you this information before we're going to give it to you again there's going to be a split and it's going to be a split of consciousness there will be those who do not raise with free choice any consciousness into light that they have and they will stay the same and they don't want anything you have 
And then there will be those, such as those listening to this and those here, which start to think higher and start to evolve. Now, the evolution over many generations will create a whole group of human beings living twice as long as you live now, expecting to and not having any of the diseases you have today. The other group will have the same lifespans you have now and will have all the diseases you have now. Can you see how they may look at you and what they may think of you? Let me tell you, in their paradigm, you have a pact with the devil. This is their idea of how you can do what you're doing. And the reason? Because you cannot look up in consciousness only down so they will see what you have done and they will understand it not there will be no understanding no matter how much you talk to them about how an alliance between your biology and your consciousness has allowed these things what will happen to them dear ones is obvious because there won't be many left they will die out but the split is inevitable and the split has happened with every advancing planet that got to the place you are today. Inevitable. So I want you to expect it because it brings about the issues and the problems you'll expect. They're going to want to live somewhere else. You're going to want to live somewhere else. And they will. And you will. There'll come a time when there will be human beings that you cannot live with. Because they are continue in a low energy. And you have decided to move on. And as much as you love them, and as much as you tell them you love them, and as much as you explain who you are and what you're doing, they will walk the other way. They cannot look up in consciousness the way you can. What happens next? You live longer and longer, and then and then a consciousness is a piece of God in its development. Your soul is always with you. So there's going to come a time when you start to meld literally with the physics of the planet. Just like the masters who were able to create things out of nothing, there are certain gifts and you start to realize that you're having more and more out of body experiences. They become out of the paradigm of the reality of life as you define it. Where I'm going with this is you're going to have to understand where this goes. What if this was all about your soul? What if there could be a time through millions of years of evolution of consciousness where it's a hard call to tell the difference between the life that is a soul sitting in front of you or the life which is a corporeal body sitting in front of you. If you see an angelic entity, are they alive? That's a good question. You would have to redefine life, would you not? And you would say, spiritually, they are alive. For they seem to have that which we understand is life, and they talk, they have consciousness, they are beautiful. Even the definition of beauty there have to be something for them to be beautiful. They're alive. And so that redefines life. Is God alive? That's a good question, isn't it? And now you get into that, that gray area of the redefinition of what life is. And eventually, you're going to come to the conclusion that life is defined by consciousness only. Anything that has a certain kind of consciousness, and you'll give the list, is alive. And that would be angels. And that would be God. And it would be the ones in the mountain. <laughs> you knew I was going there, didn't you? For they are evolved beings. And all of them have a lineage of corporealness. Coming through generations and generations on planets long before the seven sisters. To get them to a place where they would decide to come and help you on this planet. What is their lifespan? The answer is yes. <laughs> what is the lifespan of a soul, dear ones? 
Yes. That's their lifespan. And in higher consciousness, they choose to remain. Did you hear me? They choose to remain. The Menahunis choose to remain. The ones at Ayers Rock, the Red Center, Uluru, choose to remain. The ones here choose to remain. Because you have turned a corner, dear ones. They are the original teachers of the most beautiful core truths of God to you. They've implanted them into your Akash so that you could remember them if you wish or not with free choice. And they could have left. But the majority remained and the reason that they look like they're in a city is because there is sense to it all. There is structure to it all. Not a city like you think. Not a city that's corporeal with their bodies or physical. But a city nonetheless in their way. And you can't know it because you can't look up. Only down or to yourself. But there is a city. They chose to stay because as your awakening starts to be, these time capsules of the nodes and the nulls start to open. They're called time capsules because they open when it's time. And that's what's going on. Some of you have been up the mountain. And with the mountain's acknowledgement and the teachers who are here, who would explain to you a little more about what you are feeling and what is there. It's only a fraction, dear one, of what truly is there. Years ago, I spoke again of the protection of the city here, the one that you call Shasta. And I said, isn't it interesting? Everyone wants to come here, and yet there are very few facilities here. Isn't it interesting that the land is for sale, but uh, not really. We told you that there would be generations of those who would try to build massive hotels and buy and produce. And, and it hasn't happened, has it? This land is protected. It's protected from what you might expect in a tourist area. It's protected until something will happen that will be all right. And it might be the consciousness of those who develop it. And what they might put here that might be different from any other person building a large complex. My partner told you that still this small area is one of the largest that you can meet in. Wouldn't you think that over the last decade or so there would be those who see what is here. They see the tourists, they see the meetings, they say all of the strange people that want to come up on the mountain and build something for you that will accommodate large groups and auditoriums and stores and shops and all in one place and it didn't happen. That is counterintuitive to the economics of your land. This is a protected place. When you walk the streets, the neighbors are used to it by the way. <laughs> they know of all the people who will come here expecting things. It's interesting that many of the neighbors don't believe it. Those who will own land here don't believe it. You see, they're here as anchors of unbelief. <laughs> and they're not going to sell at all to the strange people who want to come. I hope some of you understand what I just told you. <laughs> There's more going on here than you think. When you get a chance to talk to the one that is called Pragi, he will tell you the story of being able to acquire the place that he has now not too far from here, which is blessed and seen. It's no wonder that he's visited with the beings in that place. He's almost the front runner of the kind of consciousness that would see places and understand why they should be in Shasta. There are things here, but the biggest thing here is the city is real. Now I want you to relax for a moment and don't try to figure it out, because you can't. 
What truly is here is benevolence and teaching and beauty and love and real souls that have melded, literally, melded through the ages into those who had such high consciousness that they no longer needed corporeal bodies. And in that there is no paradigm of travel that needs a ship. So advanced are they that they became the seeds that would change your biology and start a human being with 23 sets of chromosomes instead of 24. It would give you that which is the beginning of magnificence that you will discover because you're headed for the same place. And you would say, well, how long will it take? And the answer is yes. <laughs> Dear ones, I say that because it matters not. You'll be there. It matters not. Length of time as something that you look at and compute with and judge is a three-dimensional concept. Length of time for a Pleiadian has nothing to do with the clock. If you said, how long will it take, they would say, how much love can you receive? Everything is transferred into another kind of an answer from a master. When you ask a master what time it is, they're not going to give you the time of day. They're going to give you a question back about your life. For well, this is the master wisdom that you will find in the mountain who knows every one of you right now because you sit in the shadow of the mountain. There will be some of you who will open up to this very strange idea that I just gave you. That there are realities beyond your reality. That you don't know what you don't know yet. And all of it is exceptionally real. Could it be? Truly, could it be? That there are entities, if you want to call it that, in the mountain all over the world in mountains very similar that had to do with your creation and have been there ever since because they care about where you're going because they've experienced some of these things themselves and know what's next and out of these time capsules will pour wisdom that you can use eventually inventions that you'll have carefully constructed so that you will not weaponize them and so we'll use them for the betterment of humanity to grow more food, to clean your water, all of these things are, are there. They have it. They've had it. The extension of life, all of this, they know. But with free choice, all of you have to come on to the idea of opening a door to see it. And that door is the same kind of one some of you have opened before when you say, is there more? Are there things I haven't been told? Dear Spirit, show me. Am I doing the right thing? Dear, show, show me, dear spirit. And what spirit will come in and say, you've always been doing the right thing. And the right thing is living in integrity and love. And you can't beat that, but there's more. We spoke of the wall you come to when you meditate. And you meditate at the wall. And after you meditate, you get up and come back and do it again and again and again. And so that's, that's the end all, and it isn't. The end all is a meld. The meditation goes to the next step. You become part of the creative source. And you don't, you don't walk up after meditating and want to come back. You carry something with you. And that something that you carry with you, dear ones, is the next step. Hard to describe what that is, but it's evolution. It's longer life. It's disease that will not attract to you. It's a setup for your next life when you will arrive with knowledge and understanding and won't make the same mistakes twice because of it. That is evolution. And that's where it's going. So the days that you have here in this land called Shasta. Louise, what do you think? <laughs> and she says, welcome to my mountain. And she means it. There's more here than meets the eye. And there's so much here that is for you. 
with your name on it. We'll leave it at that. I'll be back. And so it is. <laughs>